where is the joy? Here's the question that needs to be asked. Where is the joy? And before we go any further, I want Lois to read from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 14, where that question is asked and an answer is given that we need something beyond leisure activities. We need joy, which uh, becomes then a pleasure to God's people. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day, of acceptab a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. We have just heard about a people that went through the motions of Sabbath rest. That is, they had set aside the day that was to be holy unto the Lord, but they were doing it on the outside through rituals, and they even fasted. And they thought by going through the motions of a Sabbath that they would have joy. And worse than that, they were pleasing themselves and they were oppressing others. They'd forgotten about the poor. They were uh, walking by them and not taking care of the needs of the poor the rest of the time. And they thought, again, just by going through the motions outwardly that they'd have joy. And their activity is summarized in these three phrases. If you continue to go, that is, you have your own way. Um, if you honor by not going, okay, this is how you honor the Sabbath the holy time, by not 
going your own way. They were going their own by, way by doing as they please, press, uh, oppressing the poor, and not doing as you please, not speaking idle words. Then you'll find your joy in the Lord. In other words, don't just walk through the motions and at the same time be oppressing others, but genuinely find your delight in the Lord, not in leisure activities which are only a partial cure for something and will not provide the deep kind of rest and joy that you desire and need. So if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, if you honor it by not going your own way, not doing as you please, or speaking idle words. And that can be the representation, those three concepts that we need to observe and follow and see how they're active in a wrong way in our own lives. Then you'll find your joy in the Lord. That's if you stop doing your own thing, idle words, doing as you please, living for yourself, then you'll find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and the feast and the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken up, spoken it. And I want to look at those three aspects. Less than the best are going your own way is less than the best. Doing as you please is less than the best. And speaking idle words is less than the best. If you honor me by not, not doing that, you'll find your joy in the world, in the Lord. And, and the key is that I set aside lesser joys, lesser things that please me for things that are really able to please me from the inside and it has to do with God's way and God's rest called Sabbath, Sabbath rest. So going your own way, what is it? Well, it's freedom. Freedom can be a wonderful thing. We don't want to be slaves. We don't want to be um, uh, oppressed by peoples or by the devil or anything else. Freedom can be a good thing. But freedom from what? What are we being free from? Are we trying to be free from God? Freedom from whom? Are we going astray? The book of Isaiah is largely about going astray. And we find a number of verses about going astray. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12, O oh my people, your guides lead you astray. They turn from the path. And Isaiah 9, 1, those who guide this people mislead them, and those who are guided are led astray. And Isaiah 53, all we like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, the Savior Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. But again, Isaiah is about a people that tend to go astray, sometimes very overtly and obviously. Other times, very subtly, by pretending to do what God wants, like have a time of rest, keep the Sabbath, but underneath it all, they're just going their own way. They're just doing as they please, and their mouths are chattering all, all the time, and it has nothing to do with pleasing God. Doing as you please. Here's this phrase. Yet the day of your fasting, do you not do as you please and exploit your workers? There it is. You do as you are going to do, you don't care what it what happens to other people. You go ahead and have your own way. Never mind if you hurt someone. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. You say, if I sacrifice by not eating, then God will give me my happiness. No. There's more to it than just acting out a fast. And, and you can end up in strife and so forth. How many times did churches get into arguments? Is it because they're really pleasing God? No, probably more than one person is wanting their own way. They want to please themselves. They have their own agenda instead of laying aside the agendas of the hearts. You cannot fast as you two do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Again, there are many rituals. Some are very strict. Uh, everybody must read their Bibles every day. But the same person who forces Bible reading on people may be very mean and cruel in their words and gossip and say cross things, difficult things. Uh, you must witness, but the same person might be very 
cruel and mean to their parents or their children or someone else. Uh, these things, doing as you please, can rob you of the pleasure God, of God's rest. It may look good to have it your way, to please yourself, but in the end you're left with yourself for you have been robbed of the deeper pleasure of knowing God's rest and pleasure in Him. Now speaking idle words, uh, I've put up here talk, 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 talk. There's so many conversations that go on and on and on and on. Uh, do you hear Americans, if you don't know English well, do you hear Americans talk and it sounds like just chatter, you don't know what they're saying? Probably, right? Or other people, if there's a language that you don't understand, it sounds like just a lot of words. It doesn't even sound like talk, it just sounds like uh, 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 just noise as such. Well, sometimes our chatter is just idle things, that conversations that just don't go anywhere. And it's interesting to note that after a church service in many countries, many places uh, in our own country, to pick up the conversations, and they have nothing to do with the service that just took place. They have nothing to do with God or Jesus. They're often about topics that don't really satisfy. It's okay to talk about them, but it's not what will give joy. So speaking idle words that really have very little consequence are ways of improving anyone's life. This can rob you of the pleasure of God's rest. Uh, and it's really become speaking without God or as if God were not present versus speaking as if he were present. And often it ends up into materialism about things. Maybe it's innocent like fixing something. But do our conversations ever get beyond the materialism of things? Either buying something, getting rid of something, fixing something, what is it? Or it may be about humanism, about people. We have a problem and we always look to people. We look to people to solve it rather than asking God by prayer. And pretty soon our talk, 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 our speech without God becomes materialism, materialistic and humanistic, and it becomes very much a worldly conversation in which God is locked out. We would never know, people on the street would never know that we knew God because we are just talking, talking, and we fail to intentionally bring him into the conversation and recognize his presence in our lives. Well, doing as you please, going your own way, talking idle words is less than the best. Isaiah is about repentance. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, crimson they shall be like wool. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. Again and again, Isaiah is about a call to repentance, to turn and change one's way. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.